the court. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Success Zone Monday morning edition. Uh, my name is Jeff Giamalva, and uh, hopefully everybody had a great weekend, great productive weekend uh, for some of us. And, uh, you know, some people take off the weekends, other people, right, they, a, a day is a day in their, in their journey to their dreams. So uh, obviously, whatever it is, it is for you, I'm glad you're here Monday morning. And uh, the purpose of Success Zone is to really um, share with you tips about how to build your business, personal development. It's really, you know what Success Zone is? It's a self-check. And if you're consistently self-checking yourself, I promise you, you're getting better. And if you're getting better, that makes you productive. If you're productive, you're going to be a great leader. And as a great leader is where you really make the money um, in this industry because you're leading other people, showing them what you did, not telling them what to do, showing them what you did because the evidence, right, is in your belief. And so, uh, but what I want to do is kick off um, today, stop share, stop share, and we're going to go to screen share, close that, and uh, we're going to start off with um, something from Mr. Worry, okay, this is a lead, me, lead into my training, so let's see, I can see Linda, Linda, give me a thumbs up that you could hear this when I press play, hang on, hang on. You have to reprogram your mind. You got to think completely different than you've thought up until this point. If you're a traditional business owner, you think you're going to just be able to apply all the traditional business concepts into this and make it work? You get no, you got to learn how to think different. If you've been an employee, you got to learn how to think different. If you worked in blue collar, you got to think different. If you've been a salesperson, you got to learn how to think different. You can't just think the same and expect to get big results inside of network marketing. This is its own thing. This is its own animal. You've got to think different about a lot of things. Let me give you some examples. You've got to think different about rejection. The book Go For No did a great job, in my opinion, getting people to look differently at the word no. Some people take rejection and they take it to the mat. In other words, when they get rejected, they are just destroyed. They're wrecked. And if rejection, if you put it into your mind that rejection equals you don't have any value, rejection equals you don't have any worth, rejection equals you're stupid, rejection equals you've made a bad decision, rejection equals you're not likable. If that's what rejection means to you, that will create the reality for you. If you're going to be involved in network marketing, you have to retrain your brain that rejection is just a sorting mechanism for who's ready and who's not ready, who's coin operated and who's entrepreneurial, who's open for business and who's closed. It's just a way. I wish people would wear a red hat if they're not ready to join an opportunity and a green one if they were. Wouldn't that be good? <laughs> but since they don't, guess what they do in exchange? They offer you this gift of rejection to let you know where you're spending good time and where you're not spending good time. That's all it is. It doesn't mean you're not valuable, you're not worthy, you're not capable, you're not likable. It doesn't mean you've made a bad decision. It doesn't mean your products are no good. It doesn't mean network marketing's bad. It doesn't mean any of those things. All it means is they're not ready. All it means is they might be coin operated. All it means is they don't understand right now. That's all it means. So you have to retrain your mind. I got to the point where I got proud when somebody would give me some rejection because it differentiated me. It made me feel courageous for doing what I did. 
I didn't say that they were stuck in the matrix. I didn't point at them and say, you're stuck in the matrix, but I felt it. Every time I got rejection, I felt like Neo, man. I'm the one. They want to be stuck, let them be stuck. That's okay. But here's the thing. The thing is, if you let rejection define you in a negative way, if that's how you think, you better be careful. Because it'll create a future for you and it'll create fears in you that aren't real. They're just illusions. Hey, my name is Eric Worre, and if you're involved in the network marketing, oh man. Hang tight. All right. So let me share with you. Hang on one second. Shrink. Covers. All right. So let's go to my training. You guys see my slideshow? Yes? Got it. Perfect. All right. So as always, you know, I want to leave in and um, I started this training um, uh, with, uh, I did a company training on Saturday and we're going to continue, we're going to finish it today. But just some of the things that, um, you know, that Eric Worre, and by the way, um, as a network marketing professional, you commit to as much as you can get to. You want to surround yourself. You've heard this a thousand times and we're going to talk about that. But when you look at when you look at rejection, I like what he says. Think differently. Okay, it's a sorting mechanism. Is really all it is. As you know, when I train on rejection, rejection is a positive. Rejection is not a bad thing. It's it's a rejection is a barometer that you're doing something. That's what rejection is. Okay, but rejection is a gift, right? And it should it should it really should make you feel good. But the average person taking this journey, they don't understand that. Okay, that's why the average person, listen, the average person doesn't take the journey. You know what the average person usually does? They join an opportunity. The average person does not take the journey. Don't be average. Okay, understand that. The average lifespan in this industry is 120 days. So just remember, the average person can get excited. That's easy. The average person can join and buy some product. The average person could stay on an auto ship. But the average person does not take the journey. And what I want you to do is understand the journey you're on. And during this journey that you're on, you got to have rea uh, realistic expectations. Because if you have the realistic expectations, you're not an emotional roller coaster. You can't get involved in an opportunity and look at the people walking across the stage that have been doing it for 20 years and comparing your paycheck to theirs. You could use it as, as, as motivation that you and my gosh, look at the possibilities here. But you know how many people, they start to look on the people on stage. You know those stages, you ever see that? Everybody's holding their check, right? Half a million, million, two million, five million. And you're sitting in the audience going, man, this doesn't work. And here you are, you're involved for 24 hours. And you're trying to compare yourself to the people, okay, that have done this their whole life. That'll make you nuts. You got to have your expectations based on your reality. What's your reality? Your reality is your calendar. Your calendar is a product of what you're willing to put into this. That's all it is. So based on that, based on your credibility, based on your contact base, based on your work effort, okay, there's your financial expectations. 
and we can walk you through this. Okay, well, let's be very clear. Okay, and I like, once again, I know you, a lot of you have seen this training, but let's be very clear in the beginning what you're paid for here. Okay, remember what Eric just said? Rejection, okay? You gotta think differently about rejection. Well, I, you know, I, I like the spin, but you know what? Think about it. I, I know when I was dating, okay, I, I think I can remember that far back, okay? Okay, I was rejected, okay? I used to frequent the discos. That was my, that was my, that was my feeding ground, <laughs> right back in the 70s. Are you kidding? I never missed a Friday and Saturday at the disco, okay? And I would go out there, right? And I remember vividly asking girls to dance. And I got used to rejection, okay? Not everybody said yes, but did it make a difference? If I would have stopped at the first girl who said no, right, then guess what? I would be sitting there by myself, but it didn't make a difference. I said, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask 10 girls to dance. And guess what? One said yes. Maybe not for very long, but at least they danced with me. <laughs> right? Good. So that's anything in life. If you're not happy with where you are, doesn't it make sense to make a change? Right now, if you're making a change, okay, and, and people keep telling you no, does that stop you on your journey? Why would it? Not if you have realistic expectations. So you've got to understand what you're paid for here. And what you're paid for here is your vision. Now look at, you see the word your? Your vision. Other people's vision may have gotten you involved, but eventually you have to embrace your vision. In other words, right? Let's say you were at a company event and it was your first event, first exposure, and I came on stage and I told my story. And you related to my story, which is what you want people to do, by the way, relate to your story. And then I shared with you where I was and where I'm at today. And you want to be where I'm at today. Well, you know what happened? That got you enough, that, that got you excited and it helped you make a decision. So whose vision did you buy into in the beginning? Mine. It was my story. You relate it. You know how many people related to Lisa's story? Other stay-at-home moms? Wow, I could be a stay-at-home mom and make $20,000 a month? But eventually, listen everyone, it has to be your story. Your vision. You got to be the person that shares with people where you're going. That's what we're paid for. And I'm telling you, once you understand your vision on where you're going, it takes courage, man. Remember the Wizard of Oz? C courage. Right? Remember, everybody's seen the Wizard of Oz on this call a thousand times? Okay? It takes courage. You don't need the wizard to put the, 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 the medallion around your neck. I'm going to give you the courage. You're going to buy into your own courage because you believe in your vision. Right? you got to create this. It's not, you don't have to follow a yellow brick road. Just make the decision. It's your vision. And your vision leads into the courage it's going to take to share it. And when you hit the rejection that you will, it takes stamina, man. It takes stamina to keep going, does it not? And when, and, and when you find yourself, when you find yourself lacking the courage, guess what you have to do? Guess what you have to do when you're lacking the courage? Go back to your vision. Your vision has to ignite that desire to keep going. It's what it is. But you know what? When you get it down, you can't do anything else. I'm doing a lot of analogies today. Remember Lost in Space, the robot? Danger, Will Robinson, danger, right? I'm really aging myself, right? With the disco, Wizard of Oz, and, 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 and Lost in Space. Are you kidding me? Okay. <laughs> but, but some of you are nodding. So I know we're in the same age group, okay? 
Remember the remember the robot? Danger, danger. Okay. Well, see, that's when you when, when you hit rejection, right? That's what happens in our brain. This is not working. Find something else to do. No, no. No, go back to your vision. This is what you're paid for. And what happens in our business is you have to understand the vision that you have. And I know I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but I'm going to show it again. Okay. This is what you have to buy into. I don't care what company you're with. Every company in our industry offers this. The only thing that changes is the product. The only thing that may change a little bit is the compensation plan. But how can you not buy into this? That's why this is the next slide. When I say your vision, vision is belief. And your belief has to be that at least you believe your company and your opportunity offers this. Do you not understand that when you said yes, you own your own business? Okay. Does your company not pay immediate income? Okay. How can you not believe? Aren't people covering a car payment? Let's say you're not. Are people covering their car payment in your business? Right? In your company? Are some people covering their mortgage payment? Are some people covering a child's tuition? Aren't people making $100,000 a year? Okay. Can you not advance in your compensation plan? Aren't there people that earn residual income on your auto ship or on your service? Okay. And does your company not provide a system that you can leverage? Okay. Then where's the disbelief? So that's what you're offering. And I always say the same thing. And I know sometimes this gets redundant, but that's okay. That's the secret to success, by the way. You don't, when you have a success mechanism, when you have a successful path, you don't change the path. So when you're out there and you're talking to people, even though you may not have experienced this, and by the way, everybody who started their business has experienced, number one, you own your own business. Everybody has experienced uh, uh, training leverage because you, you leverage the, the system. So that's what you want to share with people. But here's where, here's where it sometimes unravels. And this is where your financial expectations, <laughs> expectations are in need of adjustment. And believe me, you're going to need lots of adjustments. And that's what success zone is. It's an adjustment. And if you thought you could create hard work or uh, wealth without hard work, you're sadly mistaken. Unfortunately, the, the unrealistic expectations are, right, if you get two people, you could become financially independent. Now, in essence, is that not true? Sure it is. If you're working a binary system and you put one person left, one person right, and they both go out there and build huge organizations. Can you not sit back and make some good money? Wealth? Sure you could. Good luck with that plan, though. If you're in a unilevel plan, you bring in two frontline people that go crazy, and you get paid down seven, eight, nine levels. Could you not make a good income? Yes. Problem is, we're out there just looking for the two. Okay, when I say the hard work, the hard work is understanding. I got to go through some numbers to find two. A lot of numbers. Two that stick. Are you kidding me? Guys, listen. If you, got, if you talk to one person a day, right, and you got one person a month involved in your opportunity, and you kept one good one a year, you couldn't spend the money in five years. Okay, but you got to reverse engineer. How many people you got to talk to, right, to find one interested person a day? You see my point? That, that's the, see, if I just told you that's the hard work, but you can make millions, who wouldn't do this? You thought you could work part-time and earn full-time income. Okay, you just got to define this. Yeah, you could work part-time and replace your income, but full-time income and multi-level is different. 
full-time income in this industry is really different because people start thinking about seven figures. You don't think about a seven figure income in the traditional world. You don't even think about it. Think about it. The job, the job that you had, right? That, that, you, that you had for the last 10, 20, 30 years. Do you, did you even think about making seven figures? They wouldn't let you. Do you think Bally's taught me how to think about making seven figures? Bally's was trying to teach me that I should make less. They kept telling me, listen, $180,000 a year, okay, is, is, is something you should not get used to. And they would adjust my quota so I would take less. You don't think about seven figures in most other businesses, but here you do. And people think you're going to piddle and make seven figures. And then they're upset about it if they don't in six months. It's the craziest thing I've ever witnessed in my life. Jeff, I'm not at seven figures yet. Well, let me ask you a question. How long have you been doing it? Well, three months. Well, what did you do prior to this? Well, I did this. How long did you do it? 20 years. Were you wealthy? No. Then so why would you expect to be wealthy here in 90 days? You see, unrealistic expectations. And you, a lot of people think the top earners in this industry can became wealthy because of luck, good timing, or be, or, and not because of hard work. I promise you, okay, they've paved the way. We put together in, 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 in the company that I'm with now, I just put together, because uh, I'm the VP of sales for the company, and I just put together my, our core group. Okay, that, car, that core group will work harder than anybody else. But they're going to set the pace for everybody else. They're going to be the success stories that people will buy into. You follow me? And they're going to do it, and they're going to be on this core group because they're the ones willing to do whatever it takes. Otherwise, you're not on the core group. See, you got to have the same mentality. Now, who starts your core group, everybody? Who starts your core group? You do. You're, you're in the beginning, you're the core group. And as you start to get results and people start to buy in your results and you start to build an organization, you're going to spend your time with the people that have the same dreams and aspirations and the people that want to share their vision, their courage, and have stamina. That's who's on my core group. But my core group wasn't formed day one. My core group was chosen, okay, from 500 people. And they're the ones that stood out. And that's what you have to do. You got to build the team and then choose your core group. But the first person that has to be sold on the opportunity, remember what I just said, guys, is you. Then you start to form it. Because now you have your first follower. And then you, then you sponsor somebody else. You have your second follower. And then all you're doing now is you're telling your followers what to do. Why do you tell a follower what to do? Because they're a follower. And what you have to understand is a follower will follow a leader. And if you're the leader, okay, that's how you develop other leaders. So it's not because of, 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 um, of, of laziness. So this, this is the mentality you have to have. How about this? You thought you could build your network marketing business, become wealthy, and never experience any disappointments. Are you kidding me? But here's what I want you to do today. I want you to evaluate, and I want you to understand what a disappointment is. The only disappointment should be in yourself if you're not following your plan. The only disappointment is to hold yourself accountable. And if you're not account accountable to your plan, you should be disappointed. A disappointment is not a no. A disappointment is not rejection. 
A disappointment is not somebody who said yes and stops building. That's their, that's their disappointment. It's not yours. Do not own other people's disappointments. Own your disappointments. Does this make sense? A no is not a disappointment to Jeff. A no is a disappointment to the person that told themselves no. They should be disappointed, not you. But who gets disappointed? We do. See, we take everybody else's stuff personally. And that's what stops us in our tracks. I'm going to say it again. The only disappointment is if you're not following the plan that you have laid out for yourself. The only disappointment is you not having the vision. You not having the courage. You not having the stamina. That's the only disappointment. Nobody else's no is going to affect Jeff, ever. No. You thought most of your family and friends would immediately join you in your new business. How about that one? Remember? Remember, everybody? I'm sure you remember this. Some of you, it just happened last week. You got started. Make your list. Make your, it's, it's step two of everybody's multi-level. Make your list. Okay, you make your list. Oh, so-and-so will do it. This one will do it, right? Oh, my Aunt Betty, oh, she loves supplements. Oh, my God, uh, oh, my, my Uncle Bill, he loves skin creams. And then you went back to all these people, and they laughed at you. They didn't join you. And you take that as a sign that, you know what, this isn't for me. In other words, you're basing your entire business and you becoming wealthy on the 10 people you put on a sheet. What? I used to say this when I, when I brought somebody in the business. I said, let me ask you a question. Before I even take your money, before I even take your money, I want you to answer this question. If you put down 10 people, Okay, which he always did. I said, now, here's the mentality I want you to have. If every one of the 10 people that you went to, who you thought would do it, said no, and not even, not them just saying no, they made fun of you. They said they would never do multi-level marketing. If the 10 people that you really believe was going to do it told you no, would that affect your decision here or not? And if they said, yes, that would affect me making my decision, I said, then don't make it. And then I would go right over the top on them and say, listen, here's why I'm telling you that. Because if 10 people could affect your decision for you to become wealthy, you're not what I'm looking for. And then I told my story. You know how many people told me no? In fact, and this is a fact, not one of my family members not one of my friends ever joined me in my business. How about that one, guys? That's the truth. So would I base my business, would you base your business, if you owned a restaurant, would you base your entire profitability on the 10 people that you thought were gonna come to your restaurant every night? And if they didn't, would you close up shop? Oh, my mom didn't come in today. This isn't working. I, I, what? But you, you see? It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. People put on their dumb caps over here. And I used to tell people, don't do it. If, the, if your 10 closest people told you no, and that's going to depress you, we got to go through 10,000. So? So what? If you had a way to sift through 10,000, would you not do it if you can make millions? Think about it. You thought simple was the same as easy. Everybody has a simple program, but what's not easy is executing it. You thought there would be no learning curve. Okay, now let me share with you something about a learning curve. This is what makes me nuts sometimes in this business. I gotta learn the product before I do anything. 
I got to learn the comp plan before I could do anything. No, no, no. I promise you, especially in today's multi-levels, when I say about today's, the last 10 years, with social media and the videos that you could send out to people, you don't have to learn how to press send. If I had, if I had somebody, right, if I had Judy, and Judy knew nothing, but I taught Judy how to send out the video to a thousand people. And then when someone responded, she put me on the phone. Could I help Judy make money? Sure could. She has the thousand people. I have the knowledge. This is three-way training now, right? So don't tell me, when I say learning curve, you know what the learning curve is? Learning you. Learning why you are where you are after X amount of years. Learning how to tap into your desire that you haven't, that's been, that's been sitting there for 30 years. You know how many people never tap into their desire? That's what I'm talking about. Because let me tell you something, everybody. When I ignite your desire, it's a weird feeling. Because you haven't felt it in a while. What's this thing? Why am I excited? Why did I wake up today excited with that? And I didn't need coffee. Because someone tapped into your desire. And you're, 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 you're thinking this is some foreign alien that's taken over your body. That's what I'm talking about. Wow, what is this? And people go, oh my God. And they actually blow out the desire. Oh, that was uncomfortable. I got excited for a minute. <laughs> right? You ever experienced that? That's what I want you to do. That's what I'm talking about, the learning curve. You expect every distributor you, sustain, you sponsor to be a self-starter and able to build their own business. See, these are unrealistic expectations. You got to develop people. And that's why I tell people, guys, if you're not utilizing success zone, right, if you sponsor people and tell them about this, you don't have 25 years. If you're not going to Eric Worre's events in December, right, and get around the group or your company events and making sure you're promoting that, this is the system that allows you to build your belief. Eventually, what I'm doing, you'll do for your groups. Can you imagine that part? Can I expand your vision? How would you like to have 10,000 people in your organization? Right, and be able to do a weekly call with, with the 30 to 50 to 100 people that you know every, that are serious about building their business. That's where you all want to get to, right? You thought you could do this business alone and not plug your people into any system. I just talked about that. Don't be the lone ranger. Leverage what's available to you guys. Leverage what's available to you. Because in the beginning, you're not full time. And you wanna be able to leverage the system. Plug your people in. Make sure you're, you're supporting the system. You thought you could build your business and never leave your comfort zone. <laughs> this is, everything about what we do is leaving your comfort zone. Your comfort zone is the known, right? And today looks like yesterday. And today is going to look just like tomorrow because we're robotic. We're robotic. So when you start to get outside, right, of being robotic, it's uncomfortable. And you're changing your hypnotic rhythm. You're changing your hypnotic rhythm. Listen, listen, think about the words. Hypnotic, without thinking, rhythm. We all have it. No matter what, I'm hypnotic rhythm, right? I know at a certain time I'm going to the gym. That's not going to change. But what I do outside of that, okay, is different than it used to be. My hypnotic rhythm was to get up, go to work from X amount to X amount, come back, eat, go to sleep, repeat. That's a hypnotic rhythm. That's your comfort zone. 
When you get out of that hypnotic rhythm, it's uncomfortable. But let me tell you where you make more money. You make more money in the uncomfortable than the comfortable because the comfortable got you to where you are. You thought you could grow your business and not grow as a person. In other words, keep doing what you're doing, but, but expect different results. That's what that means. You can't keep doing what you're doing, expect different results. You're gonna grow as a person. That's the hard part here. It's not the video. It's not the comp. It's not the product. It's you growing because it hurts because you're gonna challenge yourself. This is a big one, right? As you start to understand this business, you thought personal recruiting was for somebody else to do. We were always number one recruiters in our companies, always top three, always top three. Every year, I had to bring in a new class. What does that mean? Every year, you're, you might, a lot of people get off to a good start because you have a group that'll follow you. Okay, what happens the next year? You know how there's always a new graduating class, right? I'm the class of 1980, right, high school. Then there's that class of 1981. Okay, it's a new class. It's every year you gotta bring in a new class of recruits. New blood, are you kidding? Why, because a lot of the old blood are gonna die. It's what it is. A lot of the old blood will incubate. And you start wondering why they're not doing something. It's not your job to figure out why someone's not doing something. Because now, once again, they control you. I might reach out to them once in a while, hey, what's up? But I'm not gonna put my financial situation in the hands of somebody else. There's other people out there. You thought your upline sponsor should build your business. Right, this, the, 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 you're in a binary. No one's throwing stuff down to me. I got this great big power leg. If someone would just do something on the other side, well, if someone, if someone, if someone would do something on the other side, you're on the other side. You're the someone. Oh, 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 yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot about me. If someone else would do something, tell me that, tell me, tell me, you don't think that way sometimes. I did. I did. It was easier to blame. And then remember, there's different stages here. What time is it? How come I don't have my clock? Someone put on the chat line what time it is. I, don't even, I can't see. Okay. So there's three stages in network marketing. Okay. Let me tell you what they are. It is 37. Okay. I got time. Thank you. It's not worth it. Most of you, eh, I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't looked at who's on. Well, I would say 99% of the people on this call, you're in the first stage. It's not worth it. You want to get to the it's worth it stage. And you only can dream of being in the stage is I'm not worth this much. Here's what you have to understand about this industry. Every stage is being realized by people. But most people, most people, most people won't get out of stage one. They'll never, they won't persevere with the courage and the stamina needed to get to it's worth it. You wanna know why? Because it is what it is. It's a business of understanding people. But when you start to see trainings like this, you go, well, wait a minute, that's okay. I'm just in my stage. Uh, it's okay. And, and, the, and the analogy I like to use in business here is a penny a day doubled. Would you like a penny a day doubled every day for 30 days or would you take a million dollars cash right now? 
Well, you start to think, well, hang on a second. I mean, let's figure this out real quick. A penny day one, two pennies day two, four pennies day three, eight pennies day, now nah, I'll take the million dollars. No, 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 no. This business is same thing. But here's what I want you to remember. In our industry, days could equal weeks or months in this industry. Let me put it to you this way. You get excited. You join your company. You are a good soldier. You go out there and you do everything I tell you to do. And your first month, your first, yeah, your, let's go month. Your first month you made a dollar. One month you made a dollar. What would you be saying? This is nuts. This isn't worth it. Man, I could stay with my job in a month, at least over here, I'm making four, $6,000 in, in a month. I made a dollar here. What does the average person do then? It's not worth it. They quit. But let's say you're not average. You go, I'm gonna persevere. Man, I bought into the training. I understand it's a business. I'm gonna go all out again and I'm gonna hold myself accountable to what I'm, I told myself I'm gonna do. And you went out there in the second month and you made $2. With all the rejection, it's not worth it. Month three, $4, are you still here? Most people, 30, 60, 90 days, you're out. Why? You made $4. It could be 400. Month, month four, $8. You guys get it? 16. Watch this. You're involved for 10 months. You made 500 bucks. Just add a zero here. 500 bucks, $512 after 10 months. Do you see what starts to happen? Look at 19 months in, 2,600 bucks. What are you saying? Wow. But here's the key. The key to getting to stage two, because most people will be in the it's not worth it stage here. Okay? Your key to stage two is your vision. And more importantly, your association with a positive environment. Staying around it. Let me ask you a question. In what you currently did before this, after 19 months, how much were you making? After 19 months, were you wealthy? I was making $3.35 an hour for two years when I started with the health clubs. What do you think I said? It's worth it? No, you know what they told me? If you persevere, you could get into sales. You know what they did? They said, let me show you what the salespeople make. But you can't get there until you pay your dues here, $3.35 an hour. And they would give me my vision of the salesperson's checks. Sounds familiar? And guess what? I got into sales. Then you know what they did? They said, okay, and I was in sales for five years. They said, you need to get into management. You need to become a supervisor. Let me show you what supervisors make. And then I got to supervisor. I was making six figures. And they said, you need to become a vice president, an area director. And they waived that paycheck. Nine years climbing the corporate ladder. Nine years. And I got to my end goal. Even the end goal never showed me how to make seven figures. But I got there. Let me show you here what the end goal can mean. Okay? Month two. I'm sorry, month 20. 5,200 that month. What are you saying now? Oh, hey, this is not bad. Month 21, 10,000. Month 23, 41,000. Month 24 months in, 83,000 a month. Do you think you remember stage one? 
You know what you're saying now? It's worth it. This is our biggest month in multi-level right here, me and Lisa. We've made that in a month. What do you think I was saying? I used to make that in a year. We made that in a month. There's people in the industry that have made over a million, two million, three million dollars a month. Do you guys get it? See, you're compounding people. But in the beginning, I wanna share with you why your income is not what you need it to be. In the, in the beginning, who's pushing the snowball up the hill? So you could look at this another way. First, day, first month, you add it one person. Second month, they, you add it two people. Third month, you add it four people. Fourth month, eight people are added to your organization. Six month, 32 people add it to your organization. 64 people. Do you understand why over here? It's because you probably had close to 4,000 people add it to your organization. Why? Because you were willing and had the courage to push the snowball up the hill. You were the ones adding the people. You were the one digging it out. But most people expect the one person they brought in to bring in everybody else. No, it doesn't work that way. If it happened to work for you, don't think you could duplicate it because it can't. But you can duplicate you adding people. Can you imagine duplicating? Well, if you find one good one, they don't tell you the part that you got to talk to 50,000. Okay, I don't want to scare you. A thousand to get one good one. You guys got it? That's it. But people in stage two and three are being paid and being willing to be paid for what others won't do. This is going to sound crazy, but it's the truth. You're paid for. This is where you need your courage, staring down fear, ignoring fatigue, fighting loneliness, pushing through discouragement, and walking by faith. Let me ask you a question. Do you think this only applies to multi-level? If you were an athlete and you, want, you got to the professional ranks, do you think you stared down fear? Do you think you ignored fatigue? Do you think you fought loneliness? Do you think you pushed through some discouragement? If you were a, 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 an entrepreneur who started a company, do you think you ever stared down fear, ignored fatigue? Doesn't make a difference. The top 1% in anything has done and, and stared down fear and put, their, and put their dreams, lives, and security on the line because they had a dream that they followed. And that's why you guys are, and I'm being honest, I'm not, I'm not just, I'm not just pushing your buttons because I tell you the truth either way, but you are modern day heroes that deserve everything that comes your way, good and bad. You deserve the bad if you're not doing what we told you to do. But that's, but that's okay. That's what shapes you. Fighting through all this is what shapes you. Don't you get it? Because now you can teach other people how to stare down the fear. You could teach other people how to ignore fatigue. You could teach people how to fight through loneliness and push through discouragement and walking by the faith that you are providing. You are different, everybody on this call. You are different. That's what made that, 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 <laughs> that's why I know without a doubt if you take your business to the next step, what you could achieve here. It's endless. It really is. But there's principles. Consistent effort. Consistent effort. I told you the story of um, my daughter's boyfriend. I said, tell me the one thing that holds you back. I had this conversation. I told some of you. He said, I'm not consistent. I said, uh-oh. We got to change this. Consistent effort, duplication, duplication. Your consistent effort equals people and people then will then duplicate what you're doing. Realistic expectations. We did that today. And I promise you, this is not about talent. It's about tenacity. 
It's not about education. No matter what. Now, I'm gonna, I should always add this to this. Do it and don't quit. With consistent effort and never quitting, it always works. With consistent effort and never quitting. It's not like, okay, well, Jeff, I'm not going to quit. Don't worry. In fact, when someone tells me that, I, think, I know they're thinking about quitting. And then I'll go home and look at the genealogy, and I could see they haven't done anything in 90 days. But they're trying to, you know what they're trying to tell themselves? I'm not going to quit. No, 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 no. An effort and don't quit. That's what I'm talking about. And then, and then, and then, wealth comes from depth. Do you understand network marketing? You sponsor, when you sponsor, that's frontline to you. Okay, I show this a lot. Let me show you. Okay, watch. When you sponsor people, right, no matter what, if you have a binary, whatever, they're still frontline personally sponsored. So when you sponsor, you make immediate income, right? But the wealth that they're talking about here comes from finding the person that takes it this way. Because this is the person then that starts sponsoring his front line and he teaches that front line. You guys got it? Well, so that, now you understand what wealth means. Wealth comes from depth. But how many people do you have to go out there and bring in, these are you sponsoring, to find the one that takes it that way. But see, that's the only thing you could do. This is your only responsibility. But we bring in one person, we go, okay, take it deep. Go ahead, brother, do it. Oh, he didn't do it, I quit. He didn't do it, I quit. What? Depth comes from duplication. Where's the duplication? You. Duplication comes from having a system. Your company has a system. Wealth is not accidental, guys. There's no accidents here. I promise you. I guarantee you the top earners in your company have more frontline people than anybody. Ask them. Say, listen, I just got off a of training. And they told me the top earners had the most frontline people. Can you tell me how many people you've personally sponsored? Then ask him how long he's been involved or her. Mary, how long have you been involved? I've been involved 10 years. How many people have you personally sponsored? Close to 300. All right, then just reverse engineer it. How many people is she bringing in a year? Consistently. One to two a month. That's what you'll find. After your initial flush, one to two a month. If you sponsor one a week, you're a superstar. See, this is what you don't get. Once you bring in the initial flush, what's the initial flush? It's another training. 40 people in six months. If you want to be good. And then one to two a month, one a week. And how do you do it? The one that shows the most presentations wins, period. Now, we all know the problems. It's not so secret what the problems are. Be the solution. Always self-correct. You guys know, I remember I did this one year with all my new people. They got a gift. They go, oh my God, this is so great. Jeff gave us a gift, Jeff and Lisa. What was the gift? It was a mirror. It was in a little um, case and they pulled out and it said, if you want to know what the problem is, just look here. Said, oh, this is, a, this, this is a great gift. Thanks. <laughs> they understood the gift though, right? After the first 30 days. Because that's where the problem always is. It's the truth. Always associate with like-minded, positive environment. Okay, positive because we're on the same journey. But it's not just telling you here. Sometimes being positive is telling you what you need to hear. So that's the training, guys. Okay, one of my favorite trainings, by the way, because it's eye-opening.
And just remember, everybody you come in contact with is in a box. Everybody's in their own hypnotic rhythm, the employee, the self-employed, the business owner, right? And we have an opportunity for everybody. But we have to be the person that relays the message. That's it. Appreciate all of you. See you Wednesday. Thanks, guys.